notes section, but for this, maybe uh, since we're going to use some of the things on this page, like these rulers over here, the photocopied rulers, and we're going to do this example here, part of it together, so maybe for this you could write it on this page. Any ideas? And if there's other ideas you want to write down, put them in the margin or up at the top or anything like that, something like that, okay? Uh, we're going we're gonna to look at the imperial system. Something that you haven't necessarily learned officially in school up to this point. You work with a metric system. Obviously, metric systems are official measurement system. Where do they use the imperial system? United States, they use, they use some imperial measures for sure in the United States. Where else? Europe, but specifically not, not mo most of Europe, no. Britain, yes. Europe is very much uh, metric, right? It's Britain and the United States and maybe a few other places in the world, but those are the main places that use imperial. And actually, it's more complicated than that because the imperial system is used in Britain, but there's some U.S. versions of some of the measurements. Like you, I mean, obviously, uh, obviously a foot is, um, is common in both, right? The length of a... One foot is the same, one inch is the same, uh, mile is the same, all that. But some of the measurements are are different in the two places. You, you have an imperial gallon and you have a U.S. gallon. There's two different sizes for gallons. And then all the other things like quarts and pints and all those things that go with it are different in the two countries. If you get a gallon in Britain and you get a gallon in the United States, they're different. We're not going to get into that level of complexity with it because we're going to focus mostly on linear measurements, which are the same in both places. Um, you might think that, uh, which system do you like better? Do you like metric better or uh, imperial? Why do you like metric better? Because what? It's based on 10. It, there's a lot of advantages to each one, right? Now, you might not see any advantages to... Uh, Imperial at this point, but metric is again based on somebody saying we're going to have one basic unit in the case of linear measure, it's the meter. We're going to have one basic unit, and then all the other ones are just going to be multiples of t like 10 times or 100 times or 1,000 times as much, but it's all going to be based on that. The thing is, what is this thing like? What What is that in real life? What What is a meter? Is there anything that's a meter? I mean, this is based on somebody arbitrarily saying, okay, you see this, uh, this stick over here? This is a meter, right? Somebody at some point had to say, this is a meter, and then we're all going to use that, right? Is this the actual length of anything? Like, where did this, who decided this is how long a meter is? I don't know. You have to look up, you have to look up the history of it. At this, I mean, now the way they keep track of how big this is, is there's like, apparently there's like 20 metal bars that are exactly a meter in there around the world someplace. But this is kind of arbitrary. This is not based on anything, right? Whereas the imperial system, all the measurements come from, well, some of the measurements come from something that makes sense, right? The inch, the foot, the yard... The mile, not so much because somebody had to decide how many feet it was or how many yards it was. The word inch um, actually comes from, I think if you look up the history of it, it's related to the, um, the word for thumb. And the length of one part of the section of your thumb is maybe approximately an inch. Okay, The imperial system, those measurements are based on historical measurements that I mean, before you had rulers like this, right, or imperial rulers, if you don't have rulers, how are you going to measure something, right? And you might have done this in kindergarten. You might have started measuring things uh, by just saying, well, how many hands does it take to go to see how high your desk is? Or how many of your feet does it take to, you know, measure from here to here or whatever? That's how historically people would have measured stuff. Before you had tape measures and things like that, right? Before you had tape measures... Like, this is pretty amazing that anywhere in the world you have a tape measure that has exactly the same markings on it, right? If you go back a long time, they didn't have this. So you measured things with, if you wanted to know how wide the room was, 
You just pay, you <laughs> used your feet. You said this is how big the room is, right? Or you paste it off with paces, right? A yard is about a pace, one pace, right? As you're walking. A foot is obviously comes from the length of an average person's foot. These measurements come from historically how you'd measure things. Somebody at some point decided that uh, what the mile was. If you look at your uh, if you look at your data booklet, it's got a lot of conversions on here so that you know what. Now, not on that page, on the first page. Okay, in the first page over on the left, there's uh, there's a lot of imperial conversions that you're going to use. These that are in blue right now. You're probably familiar with this one. One foot is 12 inches. Now, you might have always said, why did they make it 12? Why didn't they make it 10? Why didn't they make it 10? Any ideas? I guess, I mean, that's probably one thing is if you take the length of that part of your thumb and you compare it to your foot, 12 is about what it is, not 10, right? That's one reason. 12 is an easier number to work with than 10 if you don't have a calculator, which when all these measurements would have come about, there were no calculators. 12, you can divide by a lot of things. That's why they still use it in construction. 12, you can, what numbers can you divide 12 by nicely? 2, 3, 4, 6. What can you divide 10 by? 2 and 5 and 10, but that's basically it, right? Construction, a lot of times you got to divide by 3 and 4, which 10 is not so easy to do. So that's a real reason why... Um, this is what you see a lot of times in a lot of everyday things. Um, you might know that you might know this one. A yard is three feet. Okay, there's three feet in one yard. And then this one's on here, but you don't really need it because you can just combine the other two, right? One foot is 12 inches, and one yard is three feet, so a yard's got to be 36 inches. Now this one's the one that maybe you start to say, like, who in their right mind would have thought of that, right? 5,280 feet in a mile. I would like to say that I think I will blame the British for this one because apparently I am told that the uh, the Romans originally had it where a mile was 5,000 feet. Okay, 5,000 feet. All right, and um, and. Uh, then it would work nicely, right? 5,000 is a pretty nice number. But then for some reason at some point, and maybe I'm wrongly blaming the British, I don't know who, who it, whose fault it is, but somehow it eventually became 5,280. Don't know the history of that. But that's a conversion that you can use. You know unit analysis, you can do some conversions with these things, all right? With metric, we use decimals all the time, okay? You... You use decimals all the time. So, um, now I told you not to, that you wouldn't need other paper, but maybe up here somewhere you're going to, it would be good if you had some paper. So I'm going to pause this first. Actually, before we get into doing some unit conversions, let's look at the two rulers that are here. Okay? Because I think some people have a hard time reading if you haven't used a, an imperial ruler and a ruler with inches and feet on it. They have a hard time reading that, okay? Because you're used to a ruler that has centimeters and millimeters, and there's 10 spaces in there. If you look at this, how many spaces are there? There's not 10. There's only 8, right? How much is each one of those things? One-eighth of an inch. Each one of those is one-eighth of an inch, I would like you to label the first inch with what each thing is called. This is called, what is that called? One eighth. This one would be called, yeah, I mean, you could call it two eighths, but you don't call it two eighths, you call it one quarter, right? Two eighths is a quarter. What's this one called? Three eighths. If you're trying to read this, you have to use the, the, the lines to help you. You notice how some of the lines are longer? If you want to know what this one is, you notice it's a lot longer than the other ones, and you just look and say, if I only had that one, those ones, I ignore all the rest. The fact that some of them are shorter allows you to read it without looking at the other ones, right? Like if you just looked at those ones, how big is that? What's that one? What's the one in black in the middle? What's that one? It's a half, right? This is a half. 
It's one half. You could call it two quarters or you could call it four eighths, but nobody calls it that. The lines are longer to help you ignore the shorter ones when you're not working with that measurement. If all you want to look at is quarters, you just look at these three lines here, right? You look at the half and then the two quarter ones. All right. Whoops. What's the uh, what's the next one there? What's uh, this one right here? What's that one? What is that one? If you count by eighths, if each one's an eighth, you got one eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths. What's that one supposed to be? Five eighths, right? If you're counting by eighths, that one's got to be five eighths. What is uh, making the numbers too big? What does that one have to be then? Yeah, you could call it six eighths, or you could call it three quarters, right? That one's three quarters. You can look at it again like this. If you just looked at the long at, at the longer lines and ignored the ones in the middle, you have one quarter. Each of those is one quarter. You got to try and look at it and ignore the the ones you don't want in the middle, right? If you are looking at the ones in the middle, what is that last one there? If you're counting by eights, each one of those an eight. So how many is that? It's one shy of an inch. It's one less than one full inch. One full inch would be eight eighths, right? Or four quarters, or two halves, or one. What's the one right before it? The one right before it is how many eighths? Seven eighths, right? Seven eighths, that one is seven eighths. The very smallest one are all going to be the odd number of eighths. One eighth, three eighths, five eighths, seven eighths. The ones that don't reduce, right? The other ones are going to be ones that reduce, right? I want you to mark a few measurements on here that I'm going to list for you, and I want to put it, I want you to put an arrow and and point out where they are. Okay, I want you to put I want you to find on here uh, five and one half inches. I want you to find three and three quarters. I want you to find two and uh, five eighths. I want you to find one and seven eighths. And how about, how high does the ruler go? I forgot. How about four and, uh, four and one eighth? Okay. Can you put those five measurements? Just put an arrow and label them on there. Okay. I will pause this before putting that up. All right. Did you put those measurements on there? Okay. Quickly checked, hopefully, with the person next to you. Five and a half is right there. Three and three quarters is right here. Right? Again, if you're looking at quarters, you just look at those lines. Right? You just look at the, you ignore the ones in the middle. Right? That's why it's set up where the lines are progressively smaller for the smaller measurements. The longest line is the half. The next ones are the quarters, and the ones below that are the eighths. Right? It's because if they're all the same length, it'd be really hard to see where you are. This is three and three quarters. Two and five eighths right here. One past a half, right? Two and five eighths is one past two and four eighths. One and seven eighths is going to be that one right before. One and seven eighths. And then four and one eighth is going to be right here. So make sure you can locate those things. Now, to make it one step harder here, look at the scale up at the top. How many marks are there between there and there? There are 16, right? These are sixteenths, okay? If you want to, if you want to locate a few things on there, let's find. Uh, I want you to locate these points here. Let's do uh, 11 and 3 sixteenths, because I want you to be able to apply the same thing. The, the the lines are progressively smaller, right? And you can ignore the ones you don't need. These are the halves, and then. These would be the quarters, obviously, right? You just look at those long ones. Or these are the eighths. Or, and then the little ones are the sixteenths. If you want, you can count by sixteenths. Like if somebody says, where's 11 and 3 sixteenths? 11 and 1, 2, 3 sixteenths is right there, right? This is 11 and 3 sixteenths. If, if you want to find 11 and uh, 5 eighths, 
you can do it two ways, right? You can think, I'm going to ignore the little ones, and I'm just going to look at the eighths, right? Just look at those. So where's 11 and 5 eighths then? Just look at the eighths, and you say, well, 5 eighths has to be one pass there. It's right here, right? 11 and 5 eighths. Or you could think of 5 eighths. What, what could you think of 5 eighths as instead? You could say it's 11 and 5 eighths is the same as how many sixteenths? How many sixteenths is 5 eighths like? 10 sixteenths. If you think of 5 eighths as 10 sixteenths, if you convert everything to sixteenths, then it's easy. You just count on the ruler, right? And you don't have to ignore any measurements. Because you can think 5 and 10 sixteenths, well, there's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 sixteenths. It's that one, right? If you want to locate things on the ruler, you can, you can make them in higher terms than you would write them, right? All right? Are we okay with this? Do we think? Maybe? If I handed you a tape measure at some point and asked you to measure something, you'd be able to do this? Even if the tape measure had, what would the next division be? Because the first six inches on this tape measure have even one step more accuracy. They'd have 30 set For the first six inches, they're marked off in 30 seconds. Each sixteenth is split up more. Okay, so we're going to work on using those as the days go by. All right?